Welcome to Wizards of the Tower. Roleplay. In this episode, we're going to be talking about thieves versus rogues. Welcome to Wizards of the Tower. Roleplay. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about thieves versus rogues. Well, uh, the main thing is um, there's a common belief, and I think a lot of people have, that you know they couldn't call them thieves anymore later on as you went through the editions, and they had to change the name to rogue because thief was like too hardcore. Yeah, or made such a negative con had a connotation. Had a negative connotation, yeah. and parents were like, you're teaching my kids how to be a thief, you know, and all this stuff. However, going back through, Delaney and I have found out in 2nd edition, essentially, um, specifically in 2nd edition, rogue was the heading class, and thief and bard were, under, were underneath that. So, um, Rogue is what they were called in 2nd edition. Now, what did you find in 1st edition? Well, 1st edition they were called Thief, but they had a title for each one of their levels. And at 1st okay. level they were called a Rogue. Okay. At 4th level they were called a, um, a Burglar. Uh -huh. And at higher levels they were called a Master Thief. Okay, so they had different kind of sub-skills that would lay out what they were. Right. Which kind of makes sense. Um, it's interesting that underneath Rogue, you'd be off in these two trees. You'd have Thief, and then you'd have Bard. Um, the two of them, you know, kind of always had these connotations of being kind of dexterous and kind of relying on their wits and their talents, rather than, you know, being a meat shield, right. a big barbarian or something, swinging a, you know, big sword or something like that. Um, as a side note, in fantasy literature, what's one of the main thieves that you come about if you read books? Well, there, there's actually a combo. Thafford and Grey Mauser okay. both are thieves. Okay. Now they have sub, uh, they're they're multi-class. Right. Because Grey Mauser is actually also a magic user. Okay. And Thafford is also a barbarian, but they're both thieves. Okay. But Grey Mauser really is the kind of the thief to Thafford's barbarian, right? Yes. Kind of. Okay. Yes. Yeah, very much so. And then of course Gary Gygax is Gord the Rogue. Okay. So you do have, you know, these kind of references for the character and what they're doing. So um, we found out, you know, that when you divide Bard and, and Thief, um, I would admit I have a lot more experience playing uh, Bard than I do a Thief, even though I have played a Thief a few times. Quite a few times. Yeah, or Rogue, I guess yeah. what you want to call it. Um, rogues, you know, they have certain sets of skills. Yeah, well, thieves slash rogues all have certain sets of skills. Yeah, and once they got into third edition, the nat started breaking down to skills. Instead of you have these skills, you were percentile based based upon your skill, your dex, okay, and maybe your intelligence added in, and then your level. Whereas when you started getting into third edition, then you started adding in. You have a skill, and you spent points on your skill to improve or become better okay. in those skills. Now, it was in 3rd edition where they were officially, a thief was officially started being called a rogue. Okay. And then it wasn't split off between a rogue or a thief and a bard. So, they, there's more of a separation then between bard and then rogue. Right. The two of them, yeah. So, it's like, I think they became actual general character classes in and of themselves then, instead of being split down yeah. from... You know, a a, a a a larger class on top yeah. of that. And in fact, in original Dungeons and Dragons, it was a thief. It wasn't a rogue. Yeah, it was actually a thief. And it was based upon that because Gygax was looking at Fafford and Grey Mauser, and even in Conan, and because Conan was sometimes referred to as a thief. Yeah, I mean, you know, despite the fact that he was a hell of a fighter and <laughs> stuff like that, he he just you know definitely. Um, demonstrated quite a bit of thieving skills. I mean, even in the movie Conan, where Arnold Schwarzenegger and his cohorts climb up so into the, the yeah, climb up into the snake tower 
to rob the place. Yeah, to steal the eye of the serpent. Know. Yeah, so that's they do a very stealthy, you know, stealthy sort of thief type of adventure. Um, thieves, I'm, you know, I like the idea of them just be called the thief. I mean, because to me it's very liberating to play, you know, something that is really different than my personality mm -hmm. type. And to demonstrate a lot of skills that I don't demonstrate in the real world. Right. You know, one of those would be pickpocket. Well, I could never be a pickpocket, obviously. But what's really cool is when you get to play a rogue or a thief, <laughs> you get to pick people's pockets. Players, you know, frown upon you, you picking their pockets, but that's kind of some of the fun. There was a kinder in the Dragonlance that was constantly picking people's pockets and then, and then would say, hey, where's my dagger? Oh, uh, you got my dagger! Oh, this, I found it. You dropped it on the ground. Yeah. Oh, here, you can have it back, you know. Just, uh, you know, doing it for fun. Um, I will admit that I have had characters who've done that. Uh, a lot of times I've played halfling rogues, or halfling thieves as I call them. They make some of the best. And um, But then again, so was Bilbo Baggins. He was a burglar. He was a burglar, yeah. You know, he could move move silently, move unseen. And so my halfling, um, you know, was always, he would disguise himself as a human child. And then he would have a scam where he would go around begging in the streets, you know, begging for alms. He would dress in his dirty clothing and... He would say, you know, please, sir, I'm hungry. May I have a copper? And as soon as someone would give him a copper, he would say, thank you, sir. And then he'd pick their pocket. So we've had characters in our campaigns before who have frowned upon that, who didn't like that, who kind of were self-righteous. Well, you can't keep doing that. That's not right. You know, come on, it's a role-playing game. Give me a break. <sighs> so I'd have my character pick their pockets. Uh, in the game, and it always led to conflict, and it always led to Delaney as the DM having to resolve some kind of <laughs> some kind of strange conflict because some people just can't take a joke or have fun in games. Well, they couldn't take it out of character. Yeah, I couldn't take it out of character. Yeah. So that's just one of their skills. Another yeah. one would be move stealthily or silently. Everyone loves that. Who doesn't love moving around sneaky and stealthily so they can't yeah. see you? You know, get very stealthy. Avoid combat, sneak into the castle, steal the scroll, come back out without killing anybody. Yeah. Now, it used to be they were the only ones that could really move stealthily and silently. Yeah. Everybody else, you know, could could try and do it, but the, but the thief and the, the uh, or rogue, whatever you want to call them, was the main person to do that. You want to send somebody in to scout? Send the rogue or the thief in. Mm -hmm. and, and, I mean, now you kind of share those skills. With your ranger. With or, ranger and a few other things, you know. They move stealthily. Yeah. But in my opinion, move silent, move stealthy, that's really that's really the realm of the thief. Really, the burglar, the cat burglar, sneaking yeah. in, you know, robbing someone's house while they're asleep, that sort of thing, leaving leaving no trace, you know, you always get that kind of thing. And I, I tend to look at it that way of being yeah. more their skill area. Finding and removing traps. Uh, see, now that's where, in my opinion, the... Thief and rogue skills are abused. Always send the thief and the rogue into the room first so they can they can remove traps. What? Why is it the responsibility of the thief to always have to do that? You know, you go first, you can remove you can remove traps. It's like I'm not going first. Why should I go first? Send the barbarian in there, the meat shield, let them set them off. I'm walking into the room. Oh, you take yeah. I'm dead. Uh, let me refreeze that. I am moving slowly. Into the room. Yeah. Checking uh, for traps at every step. Uh, I'm crawling into the room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Finally, the guy says, send the barbarian in. Yeah. I really... That's, that's from the gamers. It's from know. the gamers, yeah. It's like, look, we don't... As, as thieves, as a person playing a rogue, you don't always have to go into the room first. I always kind of resented that. It's like, why should I go in there first? <clears throat> well, Send the meat shields and the fighters in. That's their job. Especially when you have magic users that can have spells that find, find traps. Exactly. And now a lot of that comes on to the point where people don't know how to play their magical characters. And yeah, We've had that before. Yeah. And, and two, nowadays with third on up into Pathfinder and I, possibly even into 5, 5e, uh, don't quote me on 5e, is people have a perception check. Yeah. So there is that chance of everybody seeing the trap. Yeah, I mean, rangers have great perception. Fighters can have great perception. Have them make the checks. The thief's job is really to steal, to sneak around and steal, hide in shadows, etc., etc. 
why do you have to send them in to, to deal with traps? Yeah. Big deal. I mean, they can find them. Well, they can find them. But why should they have to go in and risk their life to take a, track, a trap apart? So another part of that is opening locks. So you've got the chest. Well, the, yeah. And the, lo and behold, the, the trap is, yeah. the chest is trapped, and now wow. you're picking it, and you're hit by a poison needle, and now your thief is dead. Okay, now, here's the thing. A really good thief is going to be looking at that chest, and is going to discern, well, I see a wire right here. I see a little catch, and they should be able to, you know, take that trap apart on that chest. You know what I mean? It's kind of like open lock, but you're opening a lock to steal something rather than just blithely moving down a hallway trying to set off traps. <laughs> That's the difference between what I'm trying to say about yeah. about traps, okay? Uh, thieves should have great open locks and, and disabled trap skills because their whole purpose is to open up chests or cabinets or drawers or whatever to get stuff out and steal, not to not to scout and set off traps or disable traps for the entire party. When you could just basically roll a barrel down a hall and set all the traps off that way, you know. I mean, why not? So in in uh, previous versions, they could use a scroll, which they could reopen the scroll up and read it, and possibly use the magic. Now it was a percentile based, and that was including both magic user. And clerical, yeah, not druidical. Um, you know, in Pathfinder, it's use magic device. <clears throat> yes, and so you almost always want to have your thief or rogue have the skills of use, use magic device, and especially if they come across some scrolls or magical thieves tools, or, or a, a wand of magic weapon, missile, or a wand of magic missile, or a wand of open doors, or a wand of knock, something like that. So you know, they should have a little bit of magical skill too, so that they can sneak in and do yep. their stuff. Hiding in the shadows. The shadow. Now, I've always loved this. I've always loved the idea that you can hide in shadows or sneak around behind things. However, we've had that abused in our game before where someone's like, all right, we're in a room. There's no furniture. I'm hiding in shadows. There's no shadows in the room. You can't hide in shadows. Yeah. But there's something in the corner. It's like, that's not the kind of shadow we're talking yeah. about. Okay. Well, I'm going to make an attack and I'm going to hide in shadows again. No, there's no shadows in the room. Well, I'm hiding in shadows. I'm rolling for it. I got a, I got a 19. There's no shadows in the room. You can't hide in shadows this. when there's no shadows in the room. You know, we had a guy like that, yeah. and it just drove everybody nuts. It's like, if there's shadows, you, sh you should be able to blend in. But if there's no shadows, you can't hide in something that's not there. It's not like invisibility. Exactly. It's not like invisibility. Yeah. Okay. It's an enhancement of your camouflage skills. Use it as such. Don't try to cheat your way out of stuff by saying, Oh, I'm essentially invisible right now. You well, where's your wand of invisibility? I'm hiding right now. You can't see me. Yeah. <laughs> you can't see me. Yeah. I'm hiding. <laughs> yeah. All these lights on me. Yeah, we've had we've had, we've had people you know abuse that before. But mm -hmm. hiding in shadows is really cool because you know they usually have like kind of camouflagey outfits or roguey outfits or something, and uh, they can sneak in the back behind a wall or you know back around a door and sneak into the shadows. Yeah, there's you know, tables and things like that. Get yeah, under sure, a table, not, get behind a chair, something like that, and, and they're perfectly skilled at you know, skilled at you know remaining motionless, um, uh, camouflaging themselves, and it's a good skill to have. Understanding written words from scrolls and books. That's kind of cool because you've got to know what you're trying to steal yeah. before you steal it. Yeah, that's that's one of the old old ones. That, yeah. Uh, and nowadays they have literacy, so you just take literacy and start understanding it. But back then, you know, a, th a, th a thief could, once they got to a high enough level, could open up a scroll and, and translate. Yeah. Um, I think that comes from the fact that the original designers always wanted thieves to be very dexterous, very intelligent, very knowledgeable. They had to know what they're doing, right? They had to know what they're doing. They had to know languages mm -hmm. so that they can blend in and out of things. You know, find the right book, find the right scroll, read the scroll, um, find the chest with the, with the markings on it. That That's the one you want to break into. Yeah. You know, the idea probably is that, like, stupid thieves are dead. Smart thieves, you know, make it. Yeah. So they're more successful. Now, in 1st and 2nd edition, they actually had their own language called Thieves' Cant. C-A-N-T. 
Yeah. A cant is just a like slang. Right. So thieves slang. Right. So they could talk to it. Now, the interesting thing is Dragon number 66 actually had a dictionary of English to thieves cant and thieves cant to English. That's pretty cool. And a friend of mine and I actually memorized a little bit and Tino Tasva Sama Fab Kismafit, which means you yellow sucking dog with dragon's breath. <laughs> Insults. But I mean, um, you know, it's a great way to communicate, you know, yeah. back with the slang language. I can see probably that parents were probably really upset back then about their kids speaking <laughs> thieves can't. They're probably like, What? What are you talking? What? You know, What's that gibberish you're talking about? What's that gibberish? Tino Tasva Sama Fab Kismafit. Talking around behind their back, knowing it's like pig Latin, you know. What are you saying? What the hell? You know, smile when you say that, partner, and that kind of stuff. You know, I, I could, that probably led to a lot of conflict around kids yeah. learning thieves can't. I mean, everybody's got their own slang that they use. You know, workers have their own kind. Entertainers have their own sort of nomenclature that they use. I just think it was really cool that they had this kind of thieves can't thing. Well, yeah, you know, you, you, you go into the thieves guild and, you know, they have this language that they yeah. speak and everybody else yeah. can understand it and... You know, it was a secret language. It's like, you know, sign language in a way. You could yeah. probably, you'd probably even have that tied in. Well, now that you mentioned Thieves Guild, let's bring that up real quick. Um, or do you want to wait for we'll that? Wait for, we'll, we'll talk about that in just a moment. Okay. So another skill, backstabbing. Now, backstabbing has is, is gotten really powerful. Yeah, again, it's, it's this way to try to make a thief into a warrior when they shouldn't really be a warrior. Yeah, getting them into the middle yeah. of a combat. you got to sneak into it, but... Yeah. In, you know, sneaking in and getting behind an enemy or flanking an enemy. Now, you know, it used to be you didn't have this flanking. You just had to, to get in and and they couldn't know that you were there. Yeah. So you basically had to hide in shadows and sneak around slowly yeah. to do it. And then once you came in behind them, you stick the back, dagger yeah. in the back and poison them or, or whatever. Um, and they can do a heck of a lot of damage. Sure, if, they, if it hits right, they can. Now, wasn't there... Is it in first or second that they had assassin? First edition had the assassin. Okay, now I can imagine they got rid of that because there was all these assassin lists and stuff that people were writing out and scaring the yeah. crap out of people. Um, and I remember and it was an anecdote where I guess the FBI investigated some of the TSR employees because they supposedly oh. had an assassination list, and it was all for a game that they were playing. But um, yeah, that's quite an interesting yeah, that's, tale of how the FBI, tale. and they're like, they got what? Into it. And then they, yeah. they started looking at all this stuff, and they're like, okay, this is BS. Yeah. Somebody had reported them. Yeah, somebody reported them. So um, the idea of backstab, I think, it tries to take the idea of a thief and turn him into an assassin, you know, where they're not supposed to just, you know, open locks and you know, do things like that. They're supposed to sneak up behind the king and, like, get him in the back. Um I, I don't really like that idea of, of trying to enhance your combat skills as a thief. You're really supposed to be a pickpocket, a cut purse, a, a foot pad, a thief, you know, of, of, of you know, valuable items. Trying to turn people into well, fighters. Well, the problem with that, you know, the backstab is, is if your, your rogue thief, whatever you want to call him, comes up behind your enemy and sticks him in the back and that creature knows that they're there now, I'm going to target you. Yeah. Yeah. The, the and thing I'm going to take you out in, well, sure. in one or two hits. And that leads to the, our next one about armor and weapons. Well, obviously you're lightly armored and lightly armed because you can't be clanking around in this suit of armor. Most thieves wear like really nice leather armor, in fact. Or studded leather. Or studded leather, something like that. Something that's going to be, you know, very unobtrusive. Something that they can hide under an outfit or hide under a cloak. Um... Not chainmail, but now chainmail is actually listed as an armor that they can wear. Um, you know, I don't agree with that. I just don't. I have a chainmail shirt, and it is heavy as hell. You know, it really is heavy. It's like there. 30 pounds on my body, and they're like, well, it's distributed equally all over your body. And it's like, yeah, sure, but it's still really damn heavy, and it's really hard to get around, and it's really hard to Without move Without making in. noise. It does make noise. It, yeah, it rattles and clinks as you move. So the best kind of armor is basically just like a you know, an oiled leather jacket or something that can help you out or turn a turn a blade if they, someone tries to slash you. You know, something like that. Yeah. You know, light armor, weaponry. Again, a broadsword for a thief? Come on. Daggers. Daggers, short swords. Short swords. Maybe a hand, scimitar. Hand crossbow. Something real easy. Yeah. If you're small, climbing, small bows. Yeah, you're climbing in and out of windows. Blue guns. 
you know, climbing in and out of Head windows, axes. sneaking through doors, something really f fast and easy that you can secrete on your person. Cookeries. Cookeries are a popular one. Yeah, those things are weird, though. <laughs> um, I like a good dagger. I mean, I like a good... Dagger you know, short sword. Or yeah. rapier, even. But so, rapier, you're starting to get more into the swashbuckler. Swashbuckler. So let me, let me gripe one second, okay, about this. Why are daggers so low rated when you can kill somebody with a dagger if you know what you're doing? Just ask mm -hmm. Christopher Lee. So, why are they so, you know, 1d3 of damage? Like, 1d3 damage? I could 1D4, cut somebody. 1d4. 1d4. I could cut somebody's yeah. throat with this. Why is it rated like that? Yeah. I just don't understand. D&D &D always gets stuff wrong a lot of times, and it's just always frustrating to me. Well, it could, depend, it could totally depend upon, you know, which I guess is where they're taking the whole back, back step. You know, when okay. you're coming up and you're being the, the, the Navy SEAL and sticking the knife you know, right there, well, or sli yeah. slicing Slice the, in the neck, throat. Yeah, I mean, you got a knife. You got a Bowie knife. You know, you come up behind someone, shove it up underneath their chin. They're dead. Why can't you do that in the game? That's what I don't get. It's yeah. just there's these prejudices against certain things. Well, you then know. you start getting into hit locations and everything else. That's yeah, probably why. Probably why, because it becomes complicated. But yeah, um, I really think that a very skillful assassin would know how to take somebody out. Yeah with their weaponry and that's just always kind of it's been frustrating to me but I'd be anxious to hear what other people have to say about this how mm -hmm. you know how they enjoy playing thieves because you know we've both played thieves and loved I haven't it. played that many but I played a few now one thing that you used to have all the time was the thieves guild you always yeah. heard about the thieves guild yeah in fact there was a module in a dragon magazine that had a thieves run where you were trying to join the thieves guild and you had to make this run through their obstacle course to uh, to join their guild. Yeah. Or they have something like, okay, you want to join our guild? You've got to steal the flag of Algernon. And you're like, the flag of Algernon? Damn, that's in their headquarters. Crap. Well, okay. And if you can do it, then you're, you're worthy enough to join the, you know, some kind of yeah. task. Some kind of seemingly impossible task. That happens a lot. Why do areas need thieves guilds? It's just basically a way to create organized crime. Yep. To, uh... You know, to uh, 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 fence the stolen goods and yeah, and to maybe even possibly take the orphans off the street. In in my campaign, the thieves guilds are known about. They're actually okay as long as they don't start stealing large amounts of money from people and you know because they they recognize that some of these thieves guilds are taking orphans and feeding them, and as long as they do that, yeah, then they're okay. But, some kind of organized theft and savagery is much better than disorganized theft and savagery. And so a lot of times within playing scenarios and, and character classes and games and modules, you'll have like a thieves guild that basically controls the a amount part of, of town the or... power of town or the, controls the amount of vice that's taking place in the town so that the city watch or the city fathers always know there's like the top 10% is always going to be scraped off for the thieves guild. But if they take anything more than that and they get out of line, then it's start time. It's time to start rounding up all the you know extra people and putting them in jail and that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know they control certain aspects of the crime in the town so that crime doesn't get out of control. So this brings us to a point: it's thieves' guild. It's not rogues' guild. Right. I mean, and and what a great place to get information. It's from the Thieves Guild yeah. because a lot of times they know they they've got people. Well, yeah, they spies everywhere. They got yeah. ears ears to the ground, you know, listening about what's going on. Um, I mean, we've had the Thieves Guild in several of our campaigns, and yeah. people have contacted them and worked at them. Um, playing a thief to me, I find, is very liberating. It's a way for me to do something that I don't do character wise because I don't. I'm not that kind of person. But I find they're fun. You know, pickpocketing, sneaking into rooms, opening chests. Man, I like to play thieves in games like Skyrim. You know, I like to play really stealthy people in, in the Fallout games and things like that. It's really kind of fun to sneak around, enhance your stealth skills and sneak in. Even in the sci-fi games like Starfield, you know, to get your your stealth skill up to the point where you can sneak around. And you don't have to engage in combat. You can go all the way to the end of the scenario, open the chest, steal the weapon, and come back out and not have to kill anybody. So That's kind of cool. You know, you've played more thieves than... In your short term of gaming than I have? I think I probably have because, well, a lot of times... Well, rogues. I well, say. rogues. I mean, a lot of times I play a combination of a bard and a thief. And no one seems... Or a thief who, who, who works as a bard also. So which brings us to a campaign that we played in where the Dungeon Master did not allow bards. 
you had to play a thief who had musical abilities. I had to play a thief who had bardic skills. Yeah. Because he didn't want bards. But we had to have a bard to disguise my character as something other than a thief. So we disguised my character as a bard. Um, we've had people in our campaigns who've done some kind of unsavory stuff as thieves. Um, and it, it came to be, without mentioning any names, that it turned out to be that this person who loved playing thieves was actually a very <laughs> dishonest, reprehensible person himself, and that's why you like playing thieves, you know, and you're like a psychopath, you like, it's like, I love playing thieves, and it's like, okay, you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of yeah. how you live out your fantasies, yeah. rather than role playing, you're trying to imagine yourself as this person, it got yeah. kind of creepy. So playing thieves, you know, are you should you be pickpocketing from the party, pickpocketing from the from the public? I would say, yeah. I mean, you know, as yeah. a thief, you know, you want to practice your skills. Of course, you're going to do it yeah. from the party. But then, yeah. you know, you may want to return it or say, oh, well, you dropped this. Or I found this. Or yeah. Or as a practical joke, you know, practical you, you pick, instead of picking their pocket, you put something else, you put something in their pocket that gets them in trouble. Yeah. You know, as a practical joker, that's kind of the way you kind of play a thief in some respects as, yeah. as a practical joker. Uh, the person who likes to flip the coins through their fingers. And, mm -hmm. I mean, I, yeah. I, I tend to think of, um, you know, playing a thief or a rogue is kind of like, in my opinion, I don't really want to be a killer or an assassin. If I'm going to be an assassin, I want to play an assassin. If I want to yeah. play a rogue or a thief, I want to have fun robbing from the rich and giving to the poor. Yeah. You know, like Robin Hood, that kind of thing. Because... I, I think that, you know, those those stories are as old as time, and there's nothing wrong with them. We can have a lot of fun with them. A lot of laughs, a lot of fun, a lot of adventures. There's always adventures. Robin Hood and their Merry Men. Yep. You know, that kind of thing. Or it's, Conan, or Falfrey and Green Mountain. Yeah. Or, you know, or, or the Rogue, or, yeah. or the Hobbit, Bilbo Baggins. Yeah, you know, all that stuff. And I, 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 that's why they're, they're kind of fun and they're enduring. It's where a lot of this stuff gets out of hand where... Well, my thief, you know, has double backstab, and he's got these magical swords and this magical arm. It's like, why aren't you a fighter then? Really? You know? That's just the way I look at it. Yeah. Anyway, I'd like to hear your thoughts on rogues versus thieves, or thieves versus rogues, however you want to refer to it. Yeah. I, you know, I've gotten into the connotation now of calling them rogues, but I grew up and started playing when they were called thieves, and... I guess it's the, the connotation that everyone has on it. I know? still like to call them thieves. Yeah. Because that's how I play them. Well, you know, there's a series of books called Thieves World. I know that. I know the yeah. one, Thieves World, yeah. yeah. Which is kind of thief-based. Yep. It's kind of interesting. It's yeah. literature of, of, you know, you got your thieves out there. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we uh, hope you like this episode. And we'll like, share, subscribe, spread the word. Follow us on Discord. We'll put the post the link right down there mm -hmm. and down below in the description and anyway we thanks for watching wizards of the tower role play we hope all your adventures are epic and, and keep on rolling don't hide in the shadows now <laughs>